Hello everyone, this is Muhammad Tuhami, author of Midway Simplicity and welcome to a new episode of the Midway Decluttering Show where you will find tips and advice on how to declutter your first 100 items. And in this show, my special guest is Alex Pino from tinyhousetalk.com. He believes that small spaces provide more freedom. Alex, thank you very much for being with me on, on the episode today. Thank you, Mohammed. I'm glad to be here, and, uh, and thank you to every, everyone that's watching right now. Awesome. So l let's start by your decluttering, decluttering story. How did you start decluttering, and how did you get into the first 100 items? Okay, so I, I try to make the, the story uh, a little fun and short. My first, when I first moved out, I, I moved into a 500, around 500 square foot apartment. I never measured it, but it was around there. Similar to what I'm in right now, it's actually in the same building that I'm in right now. Later, I moved to a bigger one with a garage. It was like more than double the size. It was 1,200 square feet, had a garage. And that's when me and my girlfriend, same one that I'm with right now, we, we like filled it up. You know, we did what everybody does in America. And and so we spent like a year like that and then we looked at ourselves and then we looked at our lives and what we were doing every day and we were kind of unhappy with it. We wanted to change it. So, uh, so we figured, well, the, the number one way to, to make a change is to lower our expenses so that life is easier. So we wanted to do that and, and so we found, uh, uh, our, we basically went back to our old apartment. So, you know, we had gone to 500 square feet, we went up then we went, you know what, we're going to go back. We went back and we... During that move, we had to cut a lot of stuff. That was a. We even did things like, like she had an SUV and I had a car, and they both had car payments. And we said, well, you know what? Let's sell one of them. And we sold her SUV to get rid of the car payment. And then we bought like an old Toyota uh, Cash, like a 1990s Toyota Cash, and saved a bunch of money that way. So we took as many areas as we can and simplified it. And we we never. Uh, we definitely got rid of, you know, a lot of people talk about that they go down to just 100 things. We never did that, but we definitely got rid of hundreds of things, you know, and, uh, and that helped a lot. So as soon as we did that, it went by pretty quick and it, and it felt good. And it's funny how fast you get rid of things when you have to, like when you put yourself in a position that it's like, hey, this is not going to fit anymore where I'm going to live. So it has to go. In, in the, when I put myself in those situations, that's when I got rid of the most. And then it's kind of the most challenging when you're just like, I, I, I want to get rid of stuff. I want to clear up this stuff, but I don't have to. It's kind of more challenging that way because it's like you don't get this deadline that, that, that you get uh, the other way. So um, ever since then, to, to finish up the story, uh, that was 07, so, so simplified there. And um, ever since then, I've stayed small, haven't gone up in size much. One time we went up to 600 and now we're back up to like, you know, the 500 area. We've just moved a lot. Ever since then, I've probably moved another, another four or five times. And, uh, and, and yeah, so that's, that's where it begins. Ever since then, I haven't changed in the future. I might, li I might live in a larger place depending on my needs. Like if I have a family and stuff like that, it may change. But uh, we also talk about a, a tiny house all the time as a possibility. So we, we may do that soon. We talk about, you know, like getting some land off grid and having actually like a second place to, to have as a, as a tiny house. So, uh, so yeah, I hope that yeah. gives everyone yeah. listening a little bit of insight. So how it does. your approach to decluttering was mainly, uh, downsizing or smart sizing the location where you live. So, yeah, you didn't start, you know, one item a day or this slight of, uh, you know, small bit by bit approach. You just had massive change through relocation to a smaller size play, uh, house. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like you said, we we just cho we made this decision to live differently pretty fast, like from one yeah. moment to the other, and then did everything we had to do to fit in there. Yeah. And what was the biggest challenge while you were uh, decluttering uh, your home? The big, I think. Um, I would say for me that there is um, two of them. One was like the stress of all that stuff and the deadline of it. Like, oh my God, how am I gonna, how am I gonna get rid of all these piles of stuff if I have to? Like, I have to move from here to there. That that was stressful because there's so much at once. But then 
there was there would be moments where I get past that because I would just kind of like in my mind I would just like kind of just let go of it like you know what I don't care about this stuff and I stopped caring about like how much money I might get for things I'm like you know what I don't want it it's okay like and I'd let it go and then the stress would kind of go away and I'd and then my mind would be willing to do pretty much anything including like uh, give it away or give it to a friend or something like that but it all ended up working fine every every time I've done it. The so second you, thing you though... Mean, uh, the main stress was due to um, your desire to sell your stuff, not just to let go of it for free. Yeah, like like sometimes when when I have all this stuff I want to get rid of, it, it's like, oh, I want to get this money for this, and like, or, or I might have an emotional attachment to this, and then just all of it together would create this like stress that is just crazy. But then, uh, but then you realize, well, I have this stuff here that I really like, and I'm keeping that, and I like that, and this other stuff I really kind of don't when I compare it. So then, when when I would think like that, it, it's like more healthy, and I'd be able to easily give it away, give it to charity, sell it, or give it to a friend, or or whatever. And the number two stress was like, uh, I don't care about this anymore. But back then, I think it was I would care a little bit too much about what my my family would think, like my close family, my close friends. Because in their minds, I was like moving up in the world when I had that bigger place and, and the nicer things. Because it wasn't just bigger, I had nicer things. Like we had really nice furniture in there. And then we kind of went to where it's like, I don't know, we didn't care. There was other things that were more important. And we, we were cool with the basics just so that we can get what we truly wanted in our life. And, um, and the judgment of friends and family kind of was a little bit stressful, I guess. But now I've done it. I'm through that. I don't. I don't care anymore, and I can. I, it's not a problem for me anymore. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So uh, let me share with you some of the challenges uh, that people face when they start decluttering their home. Uh, the first challenge is that they are overwhelmed by the too much stuff they own. They cannot even think of how to start, how to begin. You were fortunate that, or you have a personality of just forcing yourself to something. And then the deadline will get you to the to the finish line. But for other people, you don't have this uh, this outgoing, you know, courageous uh, actions to 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 take. And they are just living in the middle of chaos and too much stuff all the time. And they want to declutter, but you know, the overwhelm of seeing these too much things around them just demotivate them to start the decluttering work. So what's your advice? Okay, yeah, and I can relate to this actually just like, I just moved um, since interviewing, I just moved this weekend. So so I kind of went through some of this. We had, um, I wish I could turn around the camera and show you right now. I just put up a bunch of shelves. So, so yesterday we had stuff all over, like behind me, this was all a mess yesterday. It was all over the floor. I had to build shelves to put everything away. So it was stressful. And, and and other parts like the kitchen and the bathroom and the and the bedroom was a mess too, but I had to focus here. Like it looks nice on the camera here, but the room is a mess right now because I had to finish this yesterday. And so my advice would be to focus. Like instead of worrying about the everything that is overcluttered in your life, just pick one area and try to white out the rest because otherwise you're gonna drive yourself crazy. It's just it's too much to try to tackle on at the same time. So if you can find a way to focus on one area, and then if you find that it's still too much, if that like if I pick this living room and it's still too much, it's stressing me out, then I can pick a section of this living room and start there. And it's like a very small chunk that you can bite. And then like you said earlier, that you finish that and then um, you you will have that motivation to kind of keep you rolling through through the rest of the thing. But it's a big mistake to try to think like, I got to do all, all of this at, at once. If you just take that one chunk and focus on it, you get, you get it and then you see the result, you'll get excited. So yeah. in, in my advice is in as, in as any way as you can, a, a unique creative way that you can to, uh, to just find a way to focus in and zone in on one spot and finish it. Zone in in one spot. Well, so uh, what if I lack organizational skills? So because I don't know how to organize stuff uh, no matter how much I declutter, it seems that still stuff are everywhere, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because I cannot organize them properly, so... I think that, that um, being disorganized is just kind of like, it's, it's a couple or a few bad habits, and, because if you find yourself disorganized, it's, you have a few problems because you, 
you, you're not making a home for your stuff. You're not setting one place for your stuff. And, um, and so when you use it, you're not putting it away. You're leaving it out. So that's one thing that you have to do is like, man, I got to If I use this every day and I take it out, it's got to have a little house. That way, when I'm done with it, I can put it away and I don't have to see it and feel like, like it, it's all messed up. So, so sometimes being disorganized, you, you kind of do have a lot of work in front of you, but the same approach goes. It's like, okay, well, let me just, let me just organize one area. Like, okay, like I use my keys. Why am I leaving it on my, on my dining table every day? And it's making, and then I'm leaving this other thing, like my receipts. And then by the time you know it, I can't focus because I have all this, all this stuff going on in my brain. Like I got to go through my receipts. I got to put my keys away. I got to, and it's like, yeah, you just got to pick a spot for these little things and put it away. And the benefit to that is like, you don't, you won't lose these things anymore. If your keys have a home, you know where they are every freaking time. You're not going to wonder if you, if you really pick a home for these things. And, and the key is to doing it all over. It's, but but if you if you find yourself that you're always having trouble organizing, it's it's your habits, and you got to notice you got to notice that you're not doing it, and then just start start doing it, even if it's in in little areas. Hmm, that's interesting. And and uh, what if I'm I'm too exhausted because I have a lot of work to do, and I have uh, people to to care about, and kids or children, and. Uh, by the end of the day, I have zero energy to do any decluttering work. So, what's your advice? Okay, yeah, my advice here is is you got to find a way for you to become first in in your life. Like you have all these responsibilities, you have children, you have people that need you and depend on you, and then so because of that, most likely you're putting yourself like number five, number seven, number ten, and you're not taking care of you and and actually, you're more important, even though these people need you, you need you too. And so maybe you can find a way to get up like just 40 minutes extra, 30, even just start with 20 minutes earlier than everybody else. And while they're still sleeping, you find you get those 20 minutes that are just for you. And you can, you can either, I mean, me, I like to work on in that time. I like to just work on me and making myself happy, like reading things that, that put me in a good state of mind. That way, the rest of my day flows good. But if uh, if you're too exhausted to organize, maybe you can do it there in the beginning of your day, where you still have your energy, and you can you know you can put some stuff away there, and, and then you deal with the people. And then at the end of the day, you don't have to do it anymore. You did it first. So I think it's just changing the the priority of uh, of that because if you're leaving it for last. You're gonna be exhausted no matter what you left for last. The last on your list, it's like you already used up all your energy that day. So, so maybe just change the order of it, and you'll find that you have more energy for it. Mm, great. And I'm I'm living in a so cluttered environment, a so consumer based environment, and I'm facing resistance from family and friends. They think that I'm crazy getting rid of stuff, and I shouldn't do this. But, you know, I don't know how to deal with this resistance and this situation. I love this question. I, I don't know why it's one of my favorite questions uh, dealing with people. I think because it has to do with the mind so much. And, um, and I think tips for people that are struggling with this is my first one is, is number one, don't care about changing any of your, of your friends and your family. Like just because you found something and you're excited about it, doesn't mean that, that you have to um, be passionate about it in front of people that don't care, you know, because they're just going to shoot you down and you're kind of wasting your, your energy on them. Instead, use this energy to just do things yourself. So like, if you're, I get excited too, and I've been in this position where I like, I try to convert some of my friends and some of my family. And not to say that, that everyone does this, but I find that a lot of people do when you get excited about something you want, like, you want your mom to do it. You want your brother to do it. You want your friend to n do it and know about it and be that way. And and we're all different. And you, if you just kind of just not care about about them, then you'll find yourself that you'll never be in those conversations where you're trying to like prove what you're doing and and all this stuff. Um, yeah, I hope I hope that answered it. I got a little sidetracked in, in my mind, but yeah. if, if you want to, <laughs> no, it's it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, you know. You, uh, you mainly your your advice is to just focus on yourself 
and be an inspiration to those who are around you. Don't for, force people exactly. to join you in the, in, the, in the process. Yeah, because that train of thought usually brings about that where, where your, your mm -hmm. mom will be like, hey, you know, you shouldn't do that. And it's a lot of times it's because you're sharing too much and, yeah. and, and they're, they're hearing it and then they, they'll give you that, that feedback that you don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. So if it's better to just be quiet, do the things, and then when you get the results of it, then actually your family and your friends are going to be like, hey, how, how'd you do that? And then, they're gonna, and then you can tell them because then they asked instead of you like pushing and forcing it upon them. Yeah. And let's move uh, on to the decluttering decision-making process. You know, for example, uh, when it comes to decluttering items that are associated with good memories, items that are precious and valuable and expensive, Uh, items that you received as gifts from people you you love. Uh, how to but 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 you no longer need these items in your life. But you know they are kind of sentimental items that you are so attached to somehow. Yeah, this is a really good one and a tough one because I still struggle with it. Like I have these um puppets, these little puppets that my older brother gave me when he went on a cruise to Mexico like 15 years ago. And I've never used them, but I still, every time that I come across them, for some reason, they still make the keep pile. And I, I have never used them. I don't understand why they're still there. And, uh, but my advice, I have been able to successfully get rid of other stuff similar to this. So I'll share my tips and hopefully they can help uh, anyone that's watching right now. Um, number one is, okay, first you can try taking a picture of it if it's something like that. People always say that. So you can try that and then see if you can... But your next step is passing it on. You know, do I throw it away? Do I give it away? Do I sell it? And that's your decision. But you can either fi you can find those three things. If it's worth good money and, and, and you don't mind, um, you know, just letting somebody use it, I think that's a cool way if you're like, okay, well, somebody still can get use out of this. Sell it and get money for it and let it, you know, let that item go and let someone enjoy it. Uh, number two is see if a friend or a family member won't family member wants to keep it, especially if it's, you know, it has to do with family and emotions like that, then maybe just someone wants to keep it. And then it's like, you never gave it away because somebody that you love still has it. So in a way it's still in your life. So that's kind of cool. Um, another, another idea is just to simply just give it away instead of selling it. And, um, I mean, that's, what's helped with me is giving those kinds of items to my family members who are not like me, who that they have a big house and they don't care about like, holding on to stuff because they have the room or whatever. They're just not like me, so they don't mind hanging on to things. So that's my main advice to see if you can give it away to someone you know and, and, and then the other ones that I said. Ah, cool. And uh, what about the popular uh, what if dilemma? What if I will need this item one day? What if someone asked me about it, you know? Yeah, this is a... That's another good one. That's another really good one. And, and I've had situations where like, I, I've had this thing, like I went on this trip and I thought, I thought, I thought that I wasn't going to need like a wireless router again. And then they cost 50 bucks. I threw it away because I was, uh, because I was like this and I was like, it's old, blah, blah, blah. And I was in a hurry because I had that deadline that I talked to you about. So I ended up chucking it. Two or three months later, I, I spend $50 on it. So it's, it's a weird thing because I really regretted it at that time. I was like, man, that was such a little item. I should have found a way to keep that. I should have known that I was going to need a router again. And so, yeah, I, I guess it's really just the tip is think it through. Like, you know, if, you should be able to think about it and, and really kind of know if you're going to need it or not, like an item like that. If it's a cable, like a USB cable, those are so abundant, it's like, Come on, someone you know is going to have that. A friend is going to have that. They're really cheap. Um, so, you know, cables and things like that, it's like, ah, oh, just let it go. But if you know you're going to need it, keep it. It's, it's a complicated thing, man. Uh, it really depends on the situation. But uh, I, found, I found that it's easiest to just let it go. For me, I just kind of let things go, and they find a way to come back into my life when I need them, honestly. And uh, I prefer that way of being because it really does come back. My brother will end up having the thing I need or, or I just have to buy it again. But uh, yeah, it just depends on how much room you have to, to store these things and, and how, much, uh, how much free of clutter you, you really want to be. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And, you know, decluttering is somehow useless 
if the inflow is greater than the outflow. So if you keep on purchasing new items more than you let go of old items, then you'll end up cluttered anyhow. So how do you overcome your purchasing desires? Um, I think I, I really don't have too much of a hard time with this, so I guess I must be doing a good job with it. When I do buy stuff, I buy what I want. Like I have, a, I have an expensive computer. I, I don't like I could have got the $500 computer instead of the $1,000 computer, but I really, really like my $1,000 computer and I don't think I'm going to buy another one in like five years or more. And so that helps me because I think if I would have got a cheaper one, I'd probably want, I'd be in the market for one again in a year or something like that. So I guess my tip there is buy what you really like, even if it costs more, because it's going to keep you out of the stores and it's going to keep you happier too. And, um, and then I like the idea too. One of my favorite things is quality over quantity. I love talking about that because it works in so many ways. Like if it works in relationships, it works in with stuff it works with uh i mean even with how you spend your time and things like that so it works with health with eating you you do quality foods you you can you know it i love that i love that mantra and i like to live by it as much as i can and it and it does keep me out of buying stuff if i buy a nice shirt instead of the the three dollar shirt not every time you have to really check the quality of things some companies overcharge for the hell of it and it's not really more quality so you have to just look for that. And, uh, but as long as you really, truly do get more quality, you're going to spend less time in the store because you don't have to buy as often. And you're going to like it better, and you're going to feel better. And you're gonna, you, so you're going to have more confidence. So it's all, all those things um, that I've found. So I like to look for quality, and, uh, and that helps me a lot. I like that. I like that. And do you have like a, uh, like a checklist or or a guideline that helps you decide upon what you should keep and what you should get rid of to, to help the decision-making process? Um, I, I actually don't. I kind of just go by, by my mind and like all the stuff of, you know, that I've read and learned from, from everybody else and all the books I've read and stuff. And for me, I, I just like my tool really is my mind. And, and I, just, I, have, I pretty much have conversations with myself like, I'm like my friend, my own friend, and I can ask myself questions with my brain, and it's awesome because I, j I have this item, and I can look at it, and I go, why do I have this? And my brain shoots off an answer, and then I keep coming up with more questions, and it's, I find that fun, and that's the best tool that, that I have. Yeah, so, and I, so asking questions like, uh, why do I need this, and, and what other questions why, that you... Why do uh, I need this? If I got rid of this, how would I feel? If I kept this, would I use it? You know, things like that, things that yeah. you might ask somebody else if, 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 you, if they were going through it. It's like, yeah, uh, don't, don't be afraid to talk to yourself yeah. and, just, and just have a conversation with yourself because I find uh, my best moments and answers to things are, are like that. Yeah. We, we are good mentors to other people, but we fail to be a good mentor for ourselves. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're so right. Yeah. So uh, can, can you share with us uh, um, a couple of your favorite decluttering techniques or methods that are not too time consuming? Sure. I like, um, I have a pile method and usually it's three piles. Sometimes I end up with four piles, but if I have like a big thing of stuff and I'm overwhelmed by it, like when you pick your section, instead of picking a whole room, pick a section like a drawer or a shelf or something and empty it. If there's a lot of stuff in it, if there's a box, empty it. And then just try to split those things into three piles. Like one is trash, one is sell or give away, and one is keep. So pretty simple. And then if, if it gets like to where you don't know, make one more pile called undecided. And then you can like kind of wait for it for later. And sometimes I do that. And if I'm doing a lot of decluttering one day, that just so that I can move on sometimes to the next area, I'll take that undecided pile and I'll make it really big. Like, so if I move on to drawer number two or section number two and I still can't decide on stuff, I'll, 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 I'll take that pile, that undecided pile, and I just get it out of my sight so that it doesn't stress me out anymore. And then at the end of the day, I'll go, okay, what do I want to do with all this stuff that I don't know whether to keep or to, or to sell or, or whatever. And I don't know, so that little tip just helps me move on and not stay stuck there going, oh, what do, what do I do? What do I do? So there's one. And I think that's my favorite one. It's the only one that I can think of right now. 
<laughs> okay, that's great. That's a great tip as well. So uh, let's uh, let's end the call by the by, by the philosophy behind your tiny house talk blog, which is sm- small spaces, more freedom. I like that. So and I want you to to share more about this mantra that you believe in. Sure. Yeah, I love this, and this is where it started for me here. I. If I could simplify it the most, how I can say my motivation came to simplify my life was because I wanted more freedom. I didn't like my job, and I didn't like how I was having to spend my time, and I didn't like all the bills that I was paying. And um, and so my motivation really was like, so I can have more freedom, so I can have more control of my life, so I can be the one saying, I'm going to be doing this, and I'm going to be here in this amount of time. So that was, and I think that I, I think that we can all share that. I, I'm pretty sure that a human, all humans, like we really desire freedom in whatever way. And, um, and yeah, so I figured out one of the most powerful ways for me was if I just make, every, if I make my living space smaller, I can become more powerful because it, it's just more simple. This is my space to sleep. This is my place, you know, to do these things that I want to do. And, and by making it smaller, it made it easier for me. And, and by taking away things in my life, it also made it, it's like less of a load on my shoulders and just made me that more lighter, that more freer to think and to make decisions faster. And, and that if, yeah, like now I'm, I'm lighter, I'm freer. If I, I can adjust my life pretty quick now because of, because I live in a small space and, and I just like it. I don't, I don't ever see myself going up in space besides for if I need it because my family is, is growing. But besides that, I just, I love the power of small spaces. And I, I believe very strongly that, uh, that they give us way more freedom, way more choice in life. So uh, the benefits can be awesome. And even if, if somebody changes, I think like building the foundation of, of small for a number of years, it can really, I think it can really like help someone build a really good, healthy life. Even if later they, they go, you know what, small isn't for me anymore. And I, I'm going to move into, you know, what I used to have. I think that, that the lessons that a person learned, you know, from five years of living small and, and that can really like take them to, to places. And, and even if they don't stay that way, it, it, it will be a huge beneficial thing for their life and their family, you know? For everyone around them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's that's awesome. Thank you very much, Alex, for being with me today on the call. And I hope to have you again in another show. That would be awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to, to being on here again. It was awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. So, uh, so we figured, well, the, the number one way to, to make a change is to lower our expenses so that life is easier. So we wanted to do that. And, and so we found, uh, uh, our, we basically went back to our old apartment. So, you know, we had gone to 500 square feet. We went up then we went, you know what, we're going to go back. We went back and we, during that move, we had to cut a lot of stuff. That was a, we even did things like, like she had an SUV and I had a car and they both had car payments. And we said, well, you know what? Let's sell one of them. And we sold her SUV to get rid of the car payment. And then we bought like an old Toyota uh, cash, like a 1990s Toyota cash and saved a bunch of money that way. So we took as many areas as we can and simplified it. And we, we never, uh, we definitely got rid of, you know, a lot of people talk about that they go down to just 100 things. We never did that, but we definitely got rid of hundreds of things you know and uh and that helped a lot so as soon as we did that it went by pretty quick and it and it felt good and it's funny how fast you get rid of things when you have to like when you put yourself in a position that it's like hey this is not going to fit anymore where i'm going to live so it has to go and in the when i put myself in those situations that's when i got rid of the most and then it's kind of the most challenging when you're just like i I, want to get rid of stuff i want to clear up this stuff but i don't have to it's kind of more challenging that way because it's like you don't get this deadline that, that, that you get uh, the other way. So um, ever since then, to, to finish up the story, uh, that was 07, so, so simplified there. And um, ever since then, I've stayed small, haven't gone 
up in size much. One time we went up to 600 and now we're back up to like, you know, the 500 area. We've just moved a lot. Ever since then, I've probably moved another, another four or five times. And, uh, and, and yeah, so that's, that's where it begins. Ever since then, I haven't changed in the future. I might, li- I might live in a larger place depending on my needs. Like if I have a family and stuff like that, it may change. But uh, we also talk about a, a tiny house all the time as a possibility. So we, we may do that soon. We talk about, you know, like getting some land off grid and having actually like a second place to, to have as a, as a tiny house. So, uh, so yeah, I hope that yeah. gives everyone yeah. listening a little bit of insight. So how it does. your approach to decluttering was mainly, uh, downsizing. Hello everyone, this is Mohammed Tuhami, author of Midway Simplicity and welcome to a new episode of the Midway Decluttering Show where you will find tips and advice on how to declutter your first 100 items. And in this show, my special guest is Alex Pino from tinyhousetalk.com. He believes that small spaces provide more freedom. Alex Thank you very much for being with me on, on the episode today. Thank you, Mohammed. I'm glad to be here. And, uh, and thank you to every, everyone that's watching right now. Awesome. So l- let's start by your decluttering, decluttering story. How did you start decluttering and how did you get into the first 100 items? Okay, so I, I try to make the, the story uh, a little fun and short. My first, when I first moved out, I, I moved into a 500, around 500 square foot apartment. I never measured it, but it was around there. Similar to what I'm in right now. It's actually in the same building that I'm in right now. Later, I moved to a bigger one with a garage. It was like more than double the size. It was 1,200 square feet, had a garage. And that's when me and my girlfriend, same one that I'm with right now, we, we like filled it up. You know, we did what everybody does in America. And And so we spent like a year like that and then we looked at ourselves and then we looked at our lives and what we were doing every day and we were kind of unhappy with it. We wanted to change it. 